What is up, everybody? It's Anthony, and in this week's episode, 50 Cent, this is Jay-Z. Do I hear a takeover too in the works? Uh, not exactly. This week, 50 Cent went on radio to criticize Jay-Z's new venture into the music streaming business, Tidal. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about what Tidal really is, and is it everything it's cracked up to be? So you guys know the drill. Keep it locked. And just hear me out. Before we get into some of the criticisms that 50 Cent had, for those of you who don't know what Tidal exactly is, let's just quickly recap it so you really understand what it's all about. First of all, Tidal's a streaming music service that produces lossless music. Now, lossless music is high fidelity, it's hi-fi music. Now basically what that means is that it produces CD quality music while you're listening. Now in order to access the streaming music service, it costs $9.99 per month. There is no advertisement supported free version like for example like your Spotify's, like your Pandora's. There's only one. Now another one of the their selling points is that they have exclusive interviews, high fidelity music videos. Do people even watch music videos anymore? I thought, I thought music videos died out when VH1 and MTV became a cesspool of viewing. Just a visual trash heap lit on fire just started showing reality television shows all the time. But I digress. Now another one of the sticking points for Tidal is that it's owned by the artists. It's owned by such artists as Jay-Z, Kanye West, Madonna, Beyonce, Usher. And since it's owned by the artist, what one of the claims about Tidal is that the artists that belong to the Tidal roster make more money off of their product. Now with that quick understanding, now we can at least talk about some of the criticisms that 50 Cent had. 50 Cent can't come across a diss that he did not like. So anyway, one of the first criticisms obviously that 50 Cent had was, why would people pay for something that you could get somewhere else? Now he does have a point here because what he's essentially saying is, why would a consumer purchase this product if there's comparable options out there for free? However, you do run into a problem now. Now with this high fidelity sound, you obviously need a medium that can convert this high fidelity sound. Now, if you have headphones, yes, these are my headphones. Don't hate, I know you like my headphones. Not only are you paying for the money, but you're also gonna have to pay for some kind of medium to actually bring that high fidelity sound to you. Aside from the costs that are involved with it, another one of 50 Cent's criticisms, and rightfully so, was he kind of poked at Tidal's stance that they would pay more money to the artists. All these streaming music services that the labels that these artists are involved with, the labels get about three-fourths of the share of the revenue. And there's only about 25% that's then distributed amongst the songwriters and the artists. What 50 Cent is kind of saying is he's kind of casting doubt on the fact that the artists that are with Tidal are going to get a see a bigger share as long as these record labels are still in play here. These artists with Tidal still have contracts with these labels regardless of what Tidal wants to do or plans to do. It's up to the contract to see how the royalties get distributed. Tidal's claim that the artist would get more and that differentiates their product. Does that really have any kind of effect on the consumer? I mean, do consumers really care about where their money is going or who it's going to when they're basing their choices up on what music service that you're actually subscribing to? Jay, let me let me save you guys some time and money on the market research. Let me, let me help you out with that, all right? <laughs> nope. One of the criticisms of title is this is just a case of the rich getting richer. People have a really hard time feeling bad for Jay-Z and Kanye West and Madonna. I mean, these guys are eating. They're living way better than me. Shoot. They probably got like gold line toilet paper. Basically, with the introduction of music pirating and peer-to-peer -peer sharing, people won't pay for music anymore. I mean, people go to Starbucks and spend like $25 on an iced cappuccino. But when it comes to music, no, 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 not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Can't do it, so $10 a month, way too much. No, not gonna happen. I'm still trying to wrap my head around people paying $200 for a pair of headphones. You know how bad pir music pirating destroyed the music industry is? Think about this now. People would rather spend $200 on a pair of headphones to listen to music rather than $10 for one month of actual music. People would rather just walk around wearing the damn headphones. Consider mind blown. Just let that one marinate. 
So once again, does the high fidelity music really offer that much of a competitive advantage? Do people really care about high fidelity music? You wanna talk about hi-fi? Okay, for $10 a month, I don't wanna be able to hear Kanye's fingernails growing during Jesus Walks. For $10 a month, I wanna be able to hear Madonna's inner thoughts during Material Girl. Or for her to reenact that Drake tragedy on stage in my living room once every 30 days. I'll, $10 a month, no problem, we're good. People for so long have not had to pay for music that it's so difficult for them to now revert back. So unless they offer a product that is just better than everything else out there, I really see them having to adapt and offer a free version that's you know supported by advertisements. I don't see how they could survive. As hard as it is for me to say, I think 50 does actually have a point here and being him being skeptical. Cha -cha 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 -cha.